Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your trainer for this Azure Administrator Associate AZ104 examination series. We are still at module 6. Module 6 is all about network traffic management. And the lesson we are going to learn in this video is Azure Load Balancer. So let's have a look at what are the things we are going to learn on this video. I will introduce you to what is an Azure Load Balancer and then we will understand the differentiation between public load balancer and internal load balancer. Then what are the different types of load balancer queues, backend pools, how can you apply load balancer rules, what do you mean by session persistence and health probes etc. So while I'm explaining this concept, I will take you back and forth the portal so that you exactly know what I mean about. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. So what is an Azure Load Balancer? The Azure Load Balancer delivers high availability and network performance to your applications. The Load Balancer distributes inbound traffic to backend resources using load balancing rules and health probes. The load balancing rules determine how traffic is distributed to the backend and health probe ensure that the resources in the backend are healthy. And the load balancer can be used for inbound as well as outbound scenarios and scales up to millions of TCP and UDP application flows. So keep this diagram in mind since it covers the four components that must be configured for your load balancer. The first one is front end IP configuration, then the back end pools, health props, and the load balancing rules. These are the main four components you need to configure when you think about load balancer. Let's talk about the public load balancer. There are two types of load balancers public and internal. A public load balancer maps the public IP address and port number of incoming traffic to the private IP address and port numbers of the VM and vice versa for the response traffic from the VM. By applying load balancing rules, you can distribute specific types of traffic across multiple VMs or services. For example, you can spread the load of incoming web traffic requests across multiple web servers. The following figure shows the internet client sending web page requests to the public IP address of a web app on TCP port 80. Azure Load Balancer distribute the request across these three VMs in the load balanced set. So what is an internal load balancer? An internal load balancer direct traffics only to resources that are inside a virtual network or that use a VPN to access Azure infrastructure. Front-end IP address and virtual network are never directly exposed to the internet endpoints. Internal line of business application run in Azure and are accessed from within Azure or from an on-premises resources. For example, an internal load balancer would receive database requests that need to be distributed the backend SQL servers. An internal load balancer directs traffic only to resources that are inside the virtual network. An internal load balancer enables the following types of load balancing. So let's look at these one by one. First one is within a virtual network. Load balancing from VMs in virtual network to a set of VMs that reside within the same virtual network. The second type is for cross-premises virtual network. That is a load balancing for on-premises computers to a set of VMs that reside within the same virtual network. And the third type is for multi-tier applications. For load balancing for internet-facing multi-tier applications, where the backend tier are not internet facing. The backend tiers require traffic load balancing from the internet facing tier. And the last type is for line of business applications. Load balancing for line of business applications 
that are hosted in Azure without additional load balancer hardware or software. This scenario includes on-premises servers that are in the set of computers whose traffic is load balanced. Please note that a public load balancer could be placed in front of an internal load balancer to create a multi-tier application. Let's understand the different types of load balancer queues. So I'm going to take you to the portal to show you how to create your first load balancer. I'm on my Azure portal. I'm going to go to load balancer. If you don't find load balancer here, just search for the load balancer on the global search box. Click on load balancers. I already have an Azure load balancer configured within my subscription. So I'm going to create click new. Basic details like your subscription, select a resource group or create a new resource group, give a name for your load balancer and select a region where you would like to place it. And the type of the load balancer, is it an internal load balancer or a public facing external load balancer? And there are two different SKUs, basic and standard. Some of the consideration while selecting the SKU is SKUs are not mutable. You may not change the SKU for an existing resource. A standalone virtual machine resource, availability set resource, or virtual machine scale set resource can reference one SKU, never both. Another consideration is a load balancer rule cannot span two virtual networks. Frontend and their related backend instances must be in the same virtual network. And there is no charge for the basic load balancer. The standard load balancer is charged based on the number of rules and data processed. Please note that any new designs and architecture should consider using a standard load balancer. Let's talk about backend pools. To distribute traffic, a backend address pool contains the IP address of the virtual NICs that are connected to the load balancer. I'm going to go back to my Azure portal and I'm going to go to an existing load balancer I configured. I'm going to select the load balancers and select the load balancer which I already has. Under settings of the load balancer, you can see there is a backend pool. So click on the backend pool to see what are the IP you configured for the backend. If you wish, you can add more configuration to the existing backend information. So how you configure the backend pool depends on whether you are using a standard or basic SKU. In the standard SKU, you can have up to 1000 instance in the backend pool. In the basic SKU, you can have up to 100 instances. Let's understand something about load balancer rules. A load balancer rule is used to define how traffic is distributed to the backend pool. The rule maps a given frontend IP and port combination to a set of backend IP address and port combination. To create the rule, the frontend, backend, and health probe information should already be configured. So let me show you where you can configure the load balancer rules. I'm on my Azure portal. Go to load balancers and select an existing load balancer or create a new one. And under settings, you can find load balancing rules. As you can see that I don't have any rules configured at the moment. And I'm going to click on add. So read out the warning. A prob must exist before you can create the rule. So I need to configure the health prop first before creating the rule. So let's let me show you what are the settings you so let me show you what are the settings you need to understand before setting up the rule. A load balancing rule can be used in a combination of NAT rules. For example, you could use NAT from the load balancing public IP address to TCP3389 on specific virtual machine. This allows remote desktop access from outside of Azure. So what about session persistence? By default, Azure Load Balancer 
distributes traffic by default Azure Load Balancer distributes network traffic equally among multiple VM instances. The Load Balancer uses phi tuple, source IP, source port, destination IP, destination port, and protocol type to map traffic to available servers. It provides stickiness only within the transport session. Session persistence specify how traffic from a client should be handled. The default behavior is that successive requests from a client may be handled by any virtual machine. You can change this behavior to none, client IP, and client IP protocol. So none specifies any virtual machine can handle the request. And client IP specifies the successive requests from the same client IP address will be handled by the same virtual machine. Client IP and protocol specifies that Successive requests from the same client IP address and protocol combination will be handled by the same virtual machine. Please note that keeping session persistence information is a very important in applications that use a shopping cart. All right, so let's understand what is health probes. We already touched on health probe when we started creating a load balancing rule. I'm going to take you back to the Azure portal. As you can see that before creating a rule, a prob must exist. So I'm going to click on this. It takes me directly to the health prob or I can come under settings. I can click on health probs. So I don't have one configured now. I'm going to click on add. A health prob allows the load balancer to monitor the status of your app. The health prob dynamically adds or removes VMs from the load balancer rotation based on the response to health checks. When a health probe fails to respond, the load balancer stops sending new connections to the unhealthy instances. There are two main ways to configure health probes, HTTP and TCP. So let's talk about both. In the HTTP probe, the load balancer regularly probes your endpoint, say every 15 seconds by default. The instance is healthy if it responds to HTTP 200 within the timeout period, which is default 31 seconds. Any status other than HTTP 200 causes this prop to fail. You can apply the port, the URI, for requesting the health set. In the TCP health probe, the prop relies on establishing a successful TCP connection to a defined prop port. If the specified listener on the VM exists, the prop succeeds. If the connection is refused, the prop fails. You can specify the port, interval, and unhealthy threshold. And please note that there is also a guest agent prop. This prop uses guest agent inside the VM. It is not recommended when HTTP or TCP custom prop configurations are possible. So that concludes the load balancing lesson. We are still on module six, which is network traffic management. And in the next video, we're going to talk about Azure application gateway. So I will see you on the next one. Till then, take care.